Alma Linux. You guys requested me to look at Alma Linux back in June? That request was for Alma Linux 5.4, but because I really did just look at Rocky Linux and they're pretty much the same, I went with Alma Linux 8.5 beta to see if there's anything new to look at. So as you probably know, Alma Linux is a CentOS derivative and it became a bit more popular than it was before when CentOS was discontinued in favor of CentOS Stream. The website's all right, the blog leaves something to be desired, but the wiki is pretty cool. In fact, this might actually be the coolest Linux distro wiki that I've ever seen. It's not like a media wiki sort of thing. It's a type of wiki that I don't think I've seen before. It reminds me a bit of a read the docs, sort of like make docs sort of thing. But the wiki has links to resources like vagrant images, forum posts, the blog, things like that. It also has release notes, which is pretty slick. Alma Linux also has some special interest groups, and there's a section here that talks about the differences between all of the CentOS derivatives, or I guess it's called Enterprise Linux derivatives, because CentOS is actually based on Red Hat Enterprise Linux. But as you can see from the table, Alma and Rocky Linux are almost identical, with Alma Linux having a shorter last minor version release day of eight days versus Rocky's 34 days. But something that I think is cool that I don't think I've heard anybody talk about is Alma Linux is a nonprofit, whereas Rocky Linux is a for-profit public benefit corporation. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but that's a fundamental difference in the two organizations. So this review is going to be a little bit different because I don't have all of my recording equipment and the distro Delphs PC. I'm in the middle of moving and everything is packed, so I just have my microphone and my mixer and my laptop, and that's pretty much it. So we're running this on a VM. So a cool thing about GNOME Boxes is that if it detects what Linux distro it is, it will do like an automatic install and just automate the whole thing. VirtualBox does that too, but I'm using GNOME Boxes and it has like kind of a mixed reputation because early versions were pretty rough, but the latest version of GNOME Boxes, like if you get it from FlatHub, it's pretty good. The Alma Linux installer is just Anaconda. If you've installed any CentOS derivative or even Fedora, you've seen this before. It's nothing particularly fancy. So once the install is finished and it reboots, we see the GNOME help app, which is a, a welcome app of sorts. It's more just like live documentation, which is cool, but I don't think that a person using an enterprise Linux distribution is going to need help figuring out how to use a GNOME desktop for the first time, so this seems a little out of place or a little pointless. It would have been cool if there was something like what OpenSUSE has. There's like a little welcome app that talks about the distro and not just the desktop. The documentation is cool and it has everything you need to get started with GNOME. And speaking of GNOME, this is the GNOME desktop. It's GNOME version 3.32. A bit of an older desktop by today's standards, but enterprise Linux distros are usually pretty far behind in that regard. They're usually used for servers and stuff anyway, so it's not like somebody's going to be spending a whole lot of time on the desktop. It really just needs to work. Now something that isn't highlighted with these enterprise Linux distros is just how friggin' light they are. This is 3 point gigabytes fully installed. Now I haven't run updates or anything, but at most, a fresh install fully up to date is going to be like four gigabytes. That is tiny. If you think about other Ubuntu based distros, those are usually about 10 gigabytes, give or take. And then when you think about Windows fully installed, it's anywhere between 20 and like 60 gigabytes, depending on the version of Windows that you install. And as far as system resources go, we're using under a gig of memory at idle right after login but it's using 250 megabytes of swap, which is a little bit odd. Fedora and other, I guess, similar distros use Z-Swap or ZRAM or whatever it's called, so I was curious if Alma Linux was using it. And it's not, it's just using a traditional swap file, which is fine. And it's worth pointing out, while I looked at FSTAB, I had to use Vi instead of Vim or Nano, so that's a thing. So now that we got the basic stats out of the way, let's look at the desktop. I have to say I'm a little bit surprised at just how slick these backgrounds are. Now I talk about backgrounds in most of these episodes and you gotta think that somebody or like a group of people sat down and actually made these backgrounds. 
for Alma Linux, which is an enterprise Linux distro. Most people aren't, aren't going to be using the desktop. They're going to be using the, the CLI for a server. So it's cool that they put work into it. It's still just GNOME with the default theme and skin and everything, but it's cool that they put some work into the background. I downloaded GNOME Tweaks, which is not pre-installed, so that we could look at some of the default extensions, which are exactly that, they're default. And in fact, I would say that this is the exact same setup as Rocky Linux, which shouldn't be surprising because it's an enterprise Linux distro based on CentOS, which is based on Red Hat, so why change anything? In the way of default apps, we've got Firefox Extended Support Release Version 91 as the default web browser, if you were expecting any custom tools or anything fancy like OpenSUSE's got Yast, you won't find any of that here. It comes pre-installed with just the basics, so a text editor, a video viewer, an image viewer, there's a webcam thing in here which is kind of a weird default, archive manager, calculator, disk partitioner, the basics that you would, I guess, expect from an enterprise Linux distro. I don't think that Alma chooses this. I think that they just go with whatever Red Hat ships with, so. Seeing that it uses the GNOME desktop, it's not surprising that it uses the GNOME Software Center for managing apps and stuff. It also pre-installs Flatpak, but not Flathub, so I had to install that. After I set up the FlatHub remote, I was able to get GZ Doom and Free Doom, and I'll show you that at the end of this video. But now let's talk about the distro delves test, starting with archive management. Now GNOME, or maybe it's Nautilus or Files or whatever it's called, does this weird thing with archives where some of them open just as like folders in the folder viewer but then others open in the actual like archive manager and the ones that just spontaneously extract, it doesn't give you any feedback. There's just suddenly a new folder. I've always hated that. Alma didn't like to work with the RAR file, which is a proprietary format. It usually requires an additional package. And it also didn't know what to do with the APK format, which isn't a, an obscure format. It's just a compressed sort of format for Android. Now for the audio files, there's no like rhythm box or any sort of audio playlist manager thing. So I had to open each of these individually. And the only ones that didn't work are WMA, which is Windows Media, and M4A, which is a patent encumbered format, which you can get through FFmpeg, I think, but it's not surprising that Alma doesn't ship with it. And if you're looking for good video format support out of the box, you're not gonna find it here. The only ones we could play are VP8 and VP9, which are open source, I believe. They usually play in a web browser. None of the other formats work, so H.264, MPEG, VC1. If you try to open one of them, GNOME videos will detect that it can't play it, and it will suggest a place in GNOME software to download the codecs, but I've never really seen that work very well, and it doesn't work well here. And since we're using GNOME Image Viewer here, we can open most of the formats, save for the AVIF, HEIC, and for whatever reason, it can't open the ICO format, which is just a regular image format that's been around for ages, but GNOME Images doesn't like it. In the way of network sharing, Alma was woefully unimpressive. There's no Samba support out of the box. There's no printer support out of the box. That one was surprising. There's also no DLNA file sharing by default. If you're using GNOME, a lot of times you can go to the sharing section and just turn on magic file sharing that causes your device to show up as a media device. Can't do that here. And I wasn't able to discover other computers on my network, so I don't think it was related to the VM because I've seen this work before, but I guess it could be. And yeah, I think that that is the end of the distro delves tests, and that brings us to the gaming section, which don't expect much because this is on a VM. Amazingly, I was able to get Freedom to run kinda okay inside this VM, which is honestly quite impressive. Remember, this is GNOME boxes, so I don't think there's like any acceleration going on. But I guess if you wanted a game, there's nothing really stopping you. You can download Steam from Flathub. You can download Lutris from the repo that tells you how to install it on enterprise Linux distros if you really want to. But I mean, overall, it's fine. It's like Rocky Linux, it's like CentOS. I assume that it's like Oracle Linux. I don't think we've seen that one on the show. But I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I'm not very interested in these enterprise Linux distributions. I looked at this one because you guys asked for it back in June. And I know that there's other distros that people have asked for that are way older than this one. 
But things are kind of weird for me right now. I'm in between moving. A lot of my stuff is packed. And I'm not, I can't even stream if I wanted to. I don't have all of my equipment. So I'm kind of trying to make do with what I've got here. If you guys want me to look at more business or enterprise oriented distros, feel free to leave me a comment or create an issue on the GitHub. And if there's other stuff you want me to look at with these distros, feel free to drop an issue on the GitHub for that too. But I think that's all I have to say about Alma Linux. Feel free to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and if you want to support me, you can follow me on Twitter, you can become a patron of mine on Patreon, or you can just share this video with people you think might be interested in it. I appreciate all your support, and thanks for watching.